First, you have to look at the man, because the Maharaja of Patiala is a very tall guy. He's about two meters high, he has a beard, moustache, and of course he's wearing a turban. So he's a very impressive man. And all around him, on that day of August 1928, there are guards. And all these guards are carrying trunks, which are full of precious stones. And we Boucheron was waiting for them here at Boucheron in Paris, was absolutely amazed when he discovered in the trunks one of the most important treasure he had ever seen. 7,500 diamonds, 1,500 emeralds, rubies, pearls, a treasure nobody had ever heard about on the Place Vendôme. Louis Boucheron listened to the Maharaja of Patiala and the Maharaja asked him to do something quite extraordinary. He wanted to have all these precious stones set in jewellery. Boucheron created about 149 pieces of jewellery for the Maharaja of Patiala. The best one was a necklace which was absolutely covered with emeralds and the three biggest one weighed I think there were 150 carats altogether. And about 130 pieces of jewelry. One of the questions which is very important still today about that treasure is what happened to it. Because the order was placed in 1928, the Maharaja of Patiala died in 1938, and his son and successor wore one of the necklaces, I think once, on a painting. But apart from this, none of those pieces of jewellery has ever been seen. Two solutions. Maybe the jewels were split between the wives and the children when he died in 1938. The second possibility surrounding that treasure is that everything was kept and it's sleeping somewhere in a safe uh, or in a box or in a trunk. But I'm quite sure all the jewels are still there. One day they will be back in an auction, an exhibition, or maybe even here at Boucheron in Paris. My team and I have reinvented this order for today's Maharajas, who want, above all, to express their own style and their uniqueness. To do so, we worked on scale effects and made the radical choice to use mainly white and transparency. So I'm delighted to offer you this new vision of it, and I hope you will feel transported by it. New Maharaja. This necklace revisits one of the designs from this special order. This necklace highlights a gorgeous set of nine 38 carats Colombian emeralds. We modernized it by resizing it, by clearing its colors, and by working on multiwear. This is a multi-wear necklace. We started from the design of another emerald necklace and also worked on its scale to turn the original necklace into a contemporary pair of hoops. New Maharani. These are three different necklaces that were dreamed up to be one together. This rock crystal diamond and mother of pearl monochrome barrel conveys opulence through transparency and delicacy. The plastron necklace refers to traditional Indian pieces with several strands of stones closed at the back with cords and also with the use of the glyptics technique, which is sculpting on stone here on rock crystal. We imagine this long necklace with an oversized flat tassel. It mimics a weaving work of pearls, diamonds and rock crystal. The head of the tassel represents a mother of pearl and diamond lotus flower. This is a multi-wear necklace. Two bracelets can be detached from it, so the necklace can also be worn in a shorter version. This choker is probably my favorite piece. It is so fine that it looks like a diamond lace.
nutrients. In India, brides traditionally wear multiple bracelets during the wedding ceremony as tokens of protection. This inspired us to create an oversized faceted mother of pearl bobbin to store a set of pearl and diamond bracelets to be worn all at the same time. New Panama. Here I wanted to offer a bold piece that will go all the way up to the hair. It's also a tribute to the glyptics technique with the engraving of lotus flowers in Mother of Pearl. The lotus flower is a symbol of purity and renewal. It's also inspired us to design a set of rings. We revisited our iconic parfum ring with a sculpted rock crystal cabochon. We created a rock crystal signet ring with glyptics on each side. On this third ring, the central motif can be worn by itself or adorned with two sculpted rock crystal and diamond drops. Rock crystal has always played an important part in India. It symbolizes purity and has been used to make ceremonial items. New Sarpej this hairpiece pays homage to the sarpech, which is the traditional Indian jewel used to pin men's turbans. I wanted to offer a reinterpretation of this accessory that could be worn either as a hairpiece or as a brooch. Almost a century later, this 1928 special order keeps inspiring new creations that carry the whole evolution of high jewelry within them. From a symbol of power, they have become a means to express oneself.